Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for Naples for EU4 1.34 Lions of the North. So Naples is a nation located in Italy. We pretty much occupy the entire southern portion of Italy and we do start off as a junior partner of the nation of Aragon. But don't worry about that, that's not going to be a problem because a couple of years after the game starts, Aragon is going to get an event where they're simply going to choose to let us be free. And after that our expansion can start. Naples does have a pretty nice mission tree over here even though it's a bit small and Neapolitan ideas are really really good especially for playing tall we start off with plus 10% trade efficiency and institution spread then we got plus 20% national manpower as a finisher which is really strong plus 10% goods produced which is amazing minus 5% tech cost minus 10% dev discount plus 10% morale of armies ship discounts prestige and legitimacy so an awesome set of national ideas for playing in Italy and playing tall and by following this guide you will be breaking free from Aragon conquering your cores back from them expanding over in Iberia and the Balkans all while dominating Italy and before we begin if you enjoy this video don't hesitate to leave a like it really helps out a lot and if you like the content and want to see more videos like this make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of them let's take a look at what we need to do as Naples all right all right so here we are as Naples and like I said we do start off as a junior partner of Aragon even though we're the second most powerful nation in Italy after Venice so right here at at the start we're simply gonna wait for Aragon to get that event where they can let us go but in the meantime we are gonna prepare for our first couple of wars and we are gonna get our nation in order so first you're gonna want to go into your estates and summon the diet you can pick whichever agenda is best for you then we're gonna give the clergy religious state and clerical advisory council along with religious diplomats we're gonna give the nobility primacy of the nobility increased levies and aristocratic counselors and then we're gonna give the burghers land of commerce patronage of the arts commercial advisory board and indebted it to the burgers then we're gonna seize land at the start we are making enough money to hire three advisors and aragon's starting ruler alfonso right here which is also our starting ruler because we're a junior partner is also well connected which does give us some cheaper advisors so get whichever level one and my advisor you want i'm gonna get this unrest guy get a diplerp or improve relations level one div advisor i don't have any of those so i'm just gonna get the spy network guy and then get a morale discipline or manpower level one mill advisor i also don't have any of those so i'm just gonna get this land maintenance guy and i'm gonna get this decision because i have a national unrest guy this isn't relevant to the guide but you are gonna do it if you have an unrest guy as well next we do also have three free diplomats so with one diplomat we're gonna start improving relations with austria we are gonna want to join the hre when we break free from aragon so we can fight these guys up here and we can join because we do share a sea tile with a nation in the hre sienna so start improving with austria we will need about 150 relations to enter the HRE. Next, we're gonna start spying on Siena, and in case Siena gets annexed by Florence or someone like that, start spying on whoever owns this province right here, basically the province of Siena. And then with this other diplomat, you should also start improving relations with the Pope. Our force limit at the start is 14, so we are gonna hire four more infantry regiments, just like that. Next, you can tell these two light ships to protect trade over in Genoa and go home during war and construct a couple of more light ships. Maybe five for now is enough. And then to this other fleet right here, I recommend building a couple of more galleys. About 10 total should be enough. So six more. Now you can lower army maintenance, turn off ports and wait for Aragon to get that event where they let us go. And there we go. Aragon has actually chosen to let me go because the starting ruler in fact died. This is unusually early, but you won't have to wait that long. It usually happens in about five years max. In general, you will have to wait two to three years but in my case it's happened super super early but of course this won't derail the guide it's just a year or two earlier so you can continue to follow along and when the neapolitan succession happens aragon will choose to let you become a free nation and then you can choose one of these two options right here which are related to the pope where you can choose this first option and the pope will dislike us or you can choose this second option which is basically we get a same ruler but we lose legitimacy and some ducats however the pope will like us i do recommend choosing this second option right here because i do recommend staying friendly with the pope at least until you have the entirety of italy and then we're gonna conquer them so if for some reason you don't want to remain friendly with the pope choose this first option I do recommend the second one though. And just like that, we will become an independent nation. And after you do that, your real gameplay starts. Of course, once you're independent, you can go ahead and set some rivals. And I do recommend rivaling Aragon and whoever else is available. In my case, the Pope is available, but don't rival the Pope if he's also available for you. By this point, by the time you become independent, you should have a spy network on Siena and you should have good relations with Austria. In my case, that hasn't happened yet. So I'm simply gonna wait around to get a claim on Siena 
and to gain 150 relations with Austria, because you will be doing that immediately after you break free from Aragon. If you also chose the second option to remain friendly with the Pope, legitimacy will be pretty low for now, but don't worry about that. And there we go, after a little bit of time has passed, I have been able to ally Austria and the Pope, which is something you should do immediately after you break free from Aragon. These guys should be available most of the time, especially if you improve with Austria enough, and you should have a spy network on Siena. After you get 150 relations with Austria, and you will be able to do that even if you haven't allied them, you should go ahead and join the HRE. And just like that, we're a member of the HRE, and we can go ahead and fight these guys up here without Austria getting involved. And at this point, you do need to check to see which of these two nations that I'm going to name right now will be the easiest to fight, Siena or Aragon. In my case right here, Siena is in a trade league with Venice and they're allied to Genoa, which is something that's unusual. Usually, these guys will be pretty easy to fight. So you're either going to fight Siena or Aragon. In my case right here, Aragon is only allied to Brittany and they have Navarra as a junior partner. So you will be preparing to fight whichever of these two guys is the easiest to fight, Aragon or Siena. And at this point, after you've allied the Pope and joined the HRE and maybe allied Austria, you should also start improving relations with France. As an Italian nation, we can ally both France and Austria. Of course, after you join the HRE, you will lose a diplomat because we'll go down to a duchy instead of being a kingdom. And once you've prepped for war, meaning you've gotten your forts up and your army up as well, and maybe you've recruited a couple of more regiments, you can go ahead and start your first war, which is either going to be versus Siena or Aragon. Like I said, whoever is easier to fight. In my case right here, Aragon have also been declared on by Castile, so for me, Aragon is the easier nation to fight because they also don't want to fight Genoa and Venice. And you can beat Aragon by yourself most of the time. You're just going to go ahead and cross over to Sicily, siege this down, and then wait for them to come up here from the north and beat them up in these mountains over here. You don't really need allies to fight Aragon. Usually, Siena is the more difficult nation to fight, funnily enough. So, simply go ahead and declare on Aragon for the reconquest of Messina. Your truce with Aragon expires in 1447. That's your starting truce with them. And I'm going to declare on them without allies to show you guys that it is possible. And there we go. I've already hired an admiral for my fleet right here, and I'm simply going to recruit a general as well and go ahead and fight them. This is a pretty good starting general. During this war, I can also Royal Mary France, and after the war, I will be able to ally them. If you also manage to ally France and Austria, and one of them is threatening to break the alliance with you because you're allied to the other one, keep your alliance with Austria and not France. Austria is more important in the early game. When the Renaissance spawns, if you were lucky enough, you will spawn it yourself, of course. In my case, it spawned in Luca. And there we go, in my game, I've just defeated Aragon, and they have lost a bunch of provinces to Castile, which is something that's expected. But, in your first war versus Aragon, here's what you're gonna do. And don't worry if you're not fighting them this early. Ideally, you will want to fight them before Castile PUs them, but it doesn't matter if it's this early, it can be in the 60s, and the 70s, and the 80s, it's totally up to you when you have an opportunity. But, in your first war versus Aragon, I do recommend getting all your cores back in Sicily and taking Malta as well. Something else I do recommend doing is taking in the entirety of Sardinia right here, and then I recommend taking two more provinces over here, one province in the Catalonia area, and one province over in the Valencia area, so we can actually release the nations of Catalonia and Valencia. So, maybe these two provinces right here. And that's your first war versus Aragon done. Aggressive expansion might be high by taking these provinces right here, but don't worry about that. And that's your first war versus Aragon done. Like I said, it doesn't matter when you did it, this is what you should take from them. And now that this war is done, you're simply going to go ahead and release Catalonia and Valencia as well. At this point, you can give the nobility strong duchies. Once you build up to 90% of your force limit and you're at peace, you will be able to take the mission independent Naples, which fixes your legitimacy problems. And if you're allied to the Pope and have two cardinals, you will also be able to take the mission Roman relations, which of course you should do for that papal influence. And then I do recommend starting off with the improved relations right here to help us avoid coalitions. And after you take over Sicily back from Aragon, you will also be able to take the mission Unite the Two Sicilies, which gives us some perma claims over in Greece, along with prestige, in these areas right here. And by the time you take this mission, this may or may not all be owned by the Ottomans. However, if it's not all owned by the Ottomans, and if Byzantium or Epirus are still located over here, then you do have an opportunity to take over their provinces and vassalize Byzantium or release them from a province that Epirus owns. Like in my case, I can fight Epirus right here, take the province of Arta from them, and then release Byzantium from there. This isn't necessary to do in the guide, but it is something you should do if you do have an opportunity. 
Although if you can't, don't worry, it's not gonna be a problem. And that's your first war done. At this point, either you fought Aragon and have this, or you fought Siena and have this province right here. Additionally, with the first mission, you also gain permaclaims on the entire area of Tuscany, which means even if you can't fight Siena, you might have more luck fighting Florence or Luca. And in my case, Luca is also in a trade league, but Florence does seem to be pretty easy to fight especially with the help of the Pope. So, that's your workaround if you couldn't fight Siena. You can now fight two more nations, possibly. Now that this war is over, like I said, I will be allying France. Once the Renaissance spawns, even if you did spawn it yourself, and after you've taken Tech 4 in every category, I do recommend activating the Encourage Development State Edict over in Naples. It is a level 2 center of trade and its farmlands, so it's a pretty cheap province to Devon, while it also being our capital, and I do recommend pushing Naples up to 30 development. So I'm just gonna bump it up twice in admin, twice in dip, and then four times in mill. That's enough. This will help speed up the spawning of the Renaissance, and you will be able to tick off the age objective. And for your naval doctrine, I do recommend taking galley combat ability for now, although later, when we own all of Italy, we might swap over to ship trade power. After you start your first war, you are going to want to rearrange these merchants right here. Basically, at the start, we have one collecting in Venice and one transferring from Alexandria to Genoa. But you are going to want to go ahead and collect in Genoa as well with the guy in Alexandria. This isn't to make money. And instead, it's so we can avoid coalitions and have more improved relations. So tell the guy that you put in Genoa to establish communities and tell the guy that's already in Venice to also establish communities. And then with one of your free diplomats, you can go ahead and improve with outraged country. You're gonna do this no matter who your first war was against, either Aragon or Siena. Or maybe you couldn't fight Aragon or Siena, and instead you took this mission right here and fought one of these two nations. So that's your first war. Aragon, Siena, Florence, or Luca. Additionally, after fighting Aragon, you can go ahead and delete the fort in Messina. We don't really need it. At this point, it's also not a bad idea to get another ally over here in northern Italy that's gonna help us fight some of these guys and their allies. In my case, I am gonna ally Milan, even though they're not a very competent ally most of the time. For your tier 2 government reform, until you unlock all your national ideas, I do recommend going with strength and noble privileges. Although later, when you get that national manpower idea, you can swap to noble officer core, or even compromise with the nobility. But for now, strength and noble privileges. After you've chilled a bit from your first war, whether you fought Aragon, Siena, Florence, or Luca, it doesn't matter. It's time to continue with your second war and fight those same nations that I just mentioned. Once again, whichever one of them is the easiest. Siena isn't in a trade league in my case anymore right here, but me and Milan can't beat Venice right now. You should fight Venice when they're busy with the Ottomans. So I'm just going to declare on Florence right here and fight Savoy, who's allied to them, and call in Milan. So that's my war versus Florence. Like I said, you can fight whichever of these three nations or Aragon you find the easiest to fight once again. And I'm going to declare for Pisa. Be careful when taking these provinces in Tuscany. They're all very highly developed. When the Shadow Kingdom event happens, you should choose to stay in the HRE for now, especially if Austria is allied to some other Italian nations. And once you do go ahead and beat up whichever nation in Tuscany you're fighting, take one province from them. I'm only gonna take the province of Pisa for now. It is gonna be pretty slow chipping away at Northern Italy, but it is what it is. No money, no war ups from any of these guys. We do want to fight them as soon as possible. Of course, if you can humiliate some of them, then do it. And that's my war with Florence. Done. For your first idea group as Naples, I do recommend opening up with quantity ideas. This isn't as much for the army as it is for the economy, because quantity does have really nice policies with other idea groups that we're going to take, such as trade and economic and stuff like that. So quantity ideas for your first idea group. And there we go. Once this happens, you should choose our country as a natural part of the empire. Of course, only only if you're allied to Austria. If not, you'll suffer some penalty. And there we go, I'll stay in the HRE until somehow my alliance with Austria gets broken, or until we grow too big. When you hit the 1460s, make sure to lower autonomy wherever you can because it has been increasing so far because of our low crownland. Sure, this will make some rebels pop out, but we'll make a lot more money and have more manpower. Once you can take some new burger loans, go ahead and do it. There we go, there's indebted to the burgers and start building some buildings. Primarily, marketplaces first. So I'm just going to build marketplaces in Naples and in Palermo right here, which are the center of trade provinces that I have. And after you build marketplaces, make sure to build five churches because we do need to build five churches for this mission right here. Also, make sure to seize land if all estates are above 50 loyalty. If something like this happens in your game, basically Austria making some of these guys down here a free city, which does happen sometimes, they can make Luca or Siena a free city, then that is going to be a little more difficult for you because you can't fight these guys directly without Austria getting involved. So what I would have to do right here in my game is declare on Venice and then annex Siena without co-belligerenting them so I won't have to fight Austria. 
Of course, you may feel like you're strong enough to fight Austria if someone like France comes around to help you. Once a little bit of time has passed, you can go ahead and continue with your wars, once again versus the four nations that I initially mentioned, or like I said, if you can fight Byzantium or Epirus if they're located down here. In my case, Epirus got annexed by the Ottoman. But go ahead and declare your next war when AE is not that bad. In my case, I'll declare on Luca right here since Austria is gonna help out. And there we go. There's my next war started. Once you do get the Renaissance and build five churches, you will be able to take the mission Renaissance City where this event happens. You can either choose the Age of Culture or Age of Glory, and in the Age of Culture, we gain prestige, gov reform progress, and minus 1% prestige decay and minus 10% advisor cost for 50 years, or you can choose the Age of Glory for some legitimacy. Once again, reform progress and cost of reducing war exhaustion minus 20% along with an idea discount. I do recommend going for the Age of Glory specifically for the idea cost discount. And then you need to work on the mission Develop Naples where you need to get 10 provinces up to 10 dev. And I'm only two away. I'm good with Diplo points right now. So I'm just gonna dev up these two provinces right here up to 10. Molise. And then this one twice. And there we go. We can take the mission Develop Naples for some gov reform progress. And for your tier 3 government reform, I do recommend taking Expanded Royal Court. For your first stage ability, I of course recommend taking Justified Wars. This is crucial for Italy. And once you're done with your next war, no matter who you're fighting out of these guys, like I said, only take one province from them, no matter if they're still a one province minor or if they've grown big. I'm gonna full annex Luca and take all of their money. And that's my third war done. By this point, you should be expanding in Tuscany very nicely, and you may have also fought Aragon and taken what I've taken, just like me. During all of this time, we're not just conquering. Naples is positioned to have an extremely, extremely powerful economy. And look at how much money I'm making right now in 1468. This is because we control a large portion of Genoa, and we're building very nice buildings. Now that I've built another marketplace in Pisa, I'm gonna start constructing workshops. You should do the same when you're at Admin Tech 6 and focus on building them first in the high value trade good provinces, like paper or copper. There's not a lot in southern Italy of these provinces, but when we start expanding in northern Italy, there will be a bunch. Once your truce with Aragon is up, if you fought them, and like I said, it doesn't matter when this is, all that matters is that you do do it, it might be later for you, or it might be even earlier if you got super lucky. You will declare on them once again, to take as many provinces for Valencia and Catalonia as you can, and to take the Balearic Islands as well. In my case right here, Aragon isn't very big, and I can't retake any Valencian provinces, I'll have to fight Castile for that, so I'll just declare on Aragon right here for the reconquest of Barcelona, and retake all of Catalonia's provinces along with the Balearic Islands. And there we go, that's your second war versus Aragon, or Castile slash Aragon if they've PU'd them, retaking your subjects' cores. And once you do defeat Aragon in your second war, retake as much of your subjects' cores as you can. I'm gonna Gonna give all of these cores back to Catalonia, and then I'm gonna take the Balearic Islands for myself. And because there are only one province left, why not full annex them? Zaragoza is a nice province, it's a center of trade in the Valencia trade node. And that's your second war with Aragon done. You should have retaken a bunch of cores for Valencia and Catalonia, and maybe gotten something a little more as well. Of course, if Castile have PU'd Aragon by the time you fight your second war, you are gonna need some of your boys' help, like France or Austria. Or, if you've allied Castile, you can simply beg them to give back Catalonia or Valencia's cores using favors. If at this point you've expanded over here and expanded over here and maybe even pushed into the Balkans, you can alternatively also expand in Tunis, as long as, of course, they're not allied to the Ottomans. In my case, they're not, and they're allied to Morocco and Granada, which isn't really gonna be a simple war, but because they're not allied to the Ottomans, we may have a chance. So you should go ahead and start spying on Tunis around this time and get a claim or two on them. And if you can, if you have a nice opportunity, go ahead and hit them. And once aggressive expansion has died down, you're gonna continue to fight the same nations that I mentioned at the start. At this point, I'm once again gonna hit Florence because aggressive expansion is low and my truce has expired, and we do wanna get their capital, which is a really, really nice province. I am gonna call in Austria and the Pope. And now that I have 100% at Florence, even though I haven't occupied their allies, I will be piecing them out just for the province of Florence. Like I said, we wanna take it slow over here. Of course, we could take more, but this would slow us down with fighting other nations. So, it's no problem to go one by one province. For your second idea group as Naples to make even more money, I do recommend taking trade ideas. This will help us out a lot with our position in the central Mediterranean. We will control two end nodes and a lot of these other nodes around us as well, if you're playing wide, of course, and we have an awesome policy with quantity for 20% goods produced paired with our own 10% right here, we are gonna have insane income if we take trade ideas. So after quantity, trade ideas for your second idea group. When you've expanded a bit, you may be over gov cap if you're still in the HRE because you're a duchy. In that case, I do recommend giving the clergy clergy land rights. At this point, after building some relevant buildings, I will be upgrading all three of these centers of trade to level two. That is gonna net us some very nice income. 
When you get your third merchant right here from trade, tell him to transfer from Valencia. And by the way, I'm not fighting Venice, I'm just helping out Milan, which has grown quite big in my campaign, so after this war is done, I will be breaking my alliance with them. In my game right here, since Siena is a free city, like I said, it is pretty difficult for me to declare on them without fighting Austria. So, because they've allied Bologna right here, I am actually gonna go ahead and spy on Bologna, declare on them, and then annex Siena without co-belligerenting them. And this is a pretty important province to take. If you could fight them the earliest, then you should have done it, because we do need it for this mission right here to gain more claims in Italy. I've also broken my alliance with Milan. And now that I've spied on Bologna, I will be declaring on them even though the Pope is their ally. I'll just re-ally them again, and I'll call on Austria to make this easier and quicker. Even though I'm declaring on Bologna, the main target here is Siena. And now that I've defeated Bologna and Siena, I will actually be annexing Siena. Annexing someone without co-belligerenting them is pretty expensive, and it does cost quite a lot of AE, but we do need to do it. And, since Bologna isn't that highly developed themselves, I will be annexing them as well. And there we go. Now, all the way in the 1480s, I have Siena. Ideally, you'd have done this a lot earlier than me. Once you do take Siena and two more provinces in the Tuscany region, you will be able to take this mission, which gives you permaclaims on these areas right here. And if you've already grown quite large and have more than 25 provinces, you will be able to take the mission and win the Italian Wars, which gives you mercenary discipline plus 5% until the end of the game. For tier 4 government reform, I do recommend going for lanes for the church because we are utilizing the papal powers quite heavily, or maybe not the papal powers, but these options right here and that will help us get more of them. It will help us get good relations with the Pope, which we do want to have, so definitely go for lanes for the church. And by the way, I'm not fighting Burgundy or Bohemia, I'm just helping out Austria and France. At this point, I can see that Austria is allied to Castile, and I do want to fight Castile. France would help me. The reason for this is, of course, to get Valencia scores back. So, let's check the favors with Austria. I have 30, so I'm going to create some favors with them to make them break their alliance with Castile, so I can go ahead and declare on them with the help of France. Once you get 20 galleys, you will be able to take the mission Neapolitan Navy, which gives us permaclaims on these areas right here. At this point, since aggressive expansion is high-ish with the Italian nations and taking one more province would make these guys mad, I am going to go ahead and declare on Tunis. Once again, just like fighting some of the guys in the Balkans, like Epirus or Byzantium, this is just another possible war, and it's totally not necessary to follow along with. What you really need to be expanding for this guide is Italy and Iberia. But if you can, definitely hit some of the guys in the Southern Balkans or Tunis. So, I am gonna go ahead and declare on Tunis at this point for the conquest of their capital. If you fight Tunis, once you're done with them in your first war, what you should focus on is taking the center of trade provinces. So Tripoli, Jerba, and their capital of Tunis, and then if you can, connect them like this. And if you want to, you can take a little bit more, since we haven't been fighting Muslim nations, and we really won't, unless it's Tunis, you can take as much as you want from them without worrying for aggressive expansion. So I'm also going to take that province right there, that province right there, basically as much of the coastline as I can almost their entire coastline. And even though it's 97 aggressive expansion, the only nations that will really be mad that we're doing this are probably Morocco, Tunis, and the Mamluks, so don't worry about this at all. And that's your war with Tunis done, taking as much as you can from them. Of course, make sure to put all the provinces in the Tunis trade node and assign them to a trade company. If you've also taken provinces in Safi in this war, do the same with provinces in the Safi trade node. This will make these provinces not contribute to a religious unity. Now that aggressive expansion has died down, I will be declaring on Florence to take care of the final province in the Tuscany area, and by around the 1490s, you should be completing your conquest of Tuscany as well. Additionally, I will also make Austria break their alliance with Castile, just like that, now they're no longer allied, and once I'm done with Florence right here, I'll call in France to help me fight Castile and retake all of Valencia's provinces. But for now, I'm gonna take care of Florence. By this point, you've noticed the pattern. We're fighting in Italy once or twice, then hitting the guys in Iberia, maybe Tunis, maybe the Balkans, these are the regions we're expanding in. And yes, you do want to focus on the area of Tuscany primarily first, before moving on to other provinces from Milan, Venice, Savoy, or Genoa because these are very valuable. I do mention this sometimes in my guides, if you don't know it by now, when you have a yearly inflation reduction advisor and a trade efficiency advisor, you can get the radical reforms event where you can fire both of them for points. But first I'm gonna fire them manually from here, then get the points and then just hire them back because they are really good advisors. And now that I've completed quantity and trade, I can take the production quota act for plus 20% goods produced. We're about to make some insane income. And now that I've defeated Florence, I will be taking the final province in the area of Tuscany. And with these spare ducats that I have, I will be upgrading the centers of trade over in Tunis. If these provinces aren't at 10 dev, then you can definitely go ahead and bump them up to 10 dev, so you can upgrade them to a level 2 center of trade. And make sure to build workshops in these high-value trade good provinces that you might conquer over in Northern Africa. And now that my war 
with Florence is done, like I said, I'll be jumping back and fighting Castile. You might be doing the same if Castile have feud Aragon, or if you're in a situation like this where Castile conquered provinces from Aragon. Of course, I wouldn't be strong enough myself to defeat Castile and Portugal, but with France's help, this should be pretty easy. And I'm simply gonna declare a reconquest for Valencia, which is Valencia's core. And there we go, now that I've pretty much defeated Castile, what I'm gonna do is, like I said, give these provinces back to Valencia, they're their cores, and then I'm also gonna take these three provinces, which are in the area of Aragon, which already have a province in. That's enough aggressive expansion for now, we do wanna expand it Italy, so I will go ahead and take war reps and money from them. And that's my war with Castile done. By this point, you should definitely have Valencia and Catalonia scores back, and if you had an opportunity to take something like this, then why not? You may have it too. Once you've given all of Valencia and Catalonia scores back to them, you can give the nobility the nobility integration policy, although be careful of the nobility's influence. If it's pretty high, then don't do this, and then go ahead and annex them both. You can do whichever one of them you want first, it doesn't matter too much. Also, if you're still in the HRE, you should go ahead and spam a couple of courthouses, they don't take up a building slot, and they will lower your governing capacity. And by around the 1500s, your realm should look a little something like this. Basically, we started off as Naples and waited for Aragon to let us go, and after that happened, we had an opportunity to declare wars on Aragon to retake our cores and then a little bit more, or fight some nations in Tuscany. The nations which you should have been fighting by now are Aragon, and maybe Castile slash Aragon if Castile of Piu Aragon, and then the guys over in Tuscany to take these provinces, and if you had an opportunity, you could have fought Tunis and taken something like this from them, and once again, if you had an opportunity, you could have fought some of the southern Balkan guys, or someone like Croatia or Ragusa to expand in the Balkans. This is sort of what you need to have by now, and the provinces over in northern Italy, and any provinces you might have in the Balkans are just bonuses, and are totally not necessary to follow along with the guide. And by this point, you should have all of Tuscany, you should have retaken your course from Aragon, and you should have given Valencia and Catalonia all of their cores back and maybe you've taken something a little bit more from Aragon. By this point, we haven't only been expanding though. With Naples as insane national ideas that focus on developing and playing tall, and with the idea groups that we've taken, you should be an extremely, extremely rich nation. At this point, I'm making 32 ducats a month with armies, and that's a big army, and navies, and forts up, which is really, really strong. I'm making about 22 of those ducats from trade, and all of my centers of trade are upgraded, yours should be also upgraded, and I have a bunch of workshops in the high value trade good provinces, a bunch of churches as well, and lots of marketplaces in the center of trade provinces, along with a few army buildings and stuff like that. And by this point, you should also have a fleet protecting trade in Genoa, you could build one to protect trade in Valencia as well, and by finishing off trade ideas, and by having a big percentage of this trade company over in Tunis, at this point in the game, I have six merchants, all of which are transferring trade to Genoa, one is collecting in Venice, and another one is collecting in Genoa. But remember, these two guys are still establishing communities here and not maximizing profit, at least until you conquer most of Italy. Then you can go back to maximizing profit. Marami right now is 2447, which is in line with the combat with... There we go, there's one more infantry regiment. And my main fleet right here has 20 galleys and 12 transports to help me move around and beat up any guys that I might be fighting in the Mediterranean. Your armies and navies should be looking a little something like that as well. Of course, as Naples, we will have control of a lot of great projects as well, and lots of them do benefit you, such as the one in our capital, which at tier 3 gives us some prestige, reform progress, growth, and gov cap. Later on, you will be taking St. Peter's Basilica from the Pope when you form Italy. Santa Maria del Fiore is really good for playing tall, and you will also be upgrading the Dome de Milan over here, and the one you take from Venice as well. They're all pretty nice over in Italy. Of course, you can't take advantage of the holy city of Cairoan over in Tunis, but later, if you do get the Eid Benadou, you should take advantage of that, and maybe of these other ones that you might take over in Iberia depending on our expansion wishes and opportunities. And by this point, you should continue to expand in the same directions we've already been expanding in. Of course, if you're going for an expansionist gameplay, if you're playing for a tall-ish gameplay, I recommend going for Genoa, Venice, Valencia, and Ragusa, focusing on these trade nodes right here, developing these provinces, building the relevant buildings. However, if you're blobbing out, planning to blob as Italy, maybe even the Roman Empire, then you'll just continue to push in the same directions we've already been expanding in. Once you take control of Italy, Iberia, North Africa, and the Balkans, you could continue to push on into France, into the Ottomans, further into the Mamluks. The choice is yours. And speaking of Italy, as Naples, you can form Italy, but you can also form the Two Sicilies, which is another very strong nation. If you're planning on playing tall, then keep Nia Neapolitan ideas, they're really good for playing tall. However, if you're planning on blobbing, you could definitely take the Sicilian ideas and later the Italian ones because both of those two sets are better for expansion gameplay and Naples' ideas are better for tall gameplay. And of course, you should remain Catholic for the entirety of the campaign. Make sure that Trade Company everything in the Safi and Tunis trade nodes. If you're expanding over here, Trade Company everything in the Aleppo trade node as well, and then everything else 
you can go ahead and state up and convert those provinces to Catholic because you should have pretty high missionary strength. After taking quantity and trade ideas for your third idea group, I recommend quality ideas. This will buff up your army and navy significantly and it also has nice policies with other idea groups that we're going to take. After quantity, trade and quality, for your third idea group, I recommend economic ideas. This will buff up your economy and armies even more. And after quantity and trade and quality and economic, the choice for the other four idea groups, if you even play that for, is up to you. This is what we took for our first four government reforms. For tier five, I recommend meritocratic recruitment. For tier six, I recommend royal decree. For tier eight, I recommend either this one right here or this one right here or this one right here. All of three of them are really good as Naples and later as Italy. For tier eight, you should take this one. For tier nine, all of them are really good along with tier 10. Basically, whenever you're at tier nine or tier 10, take whichever one of these you want and whichever one of these you need. At that point in the game, you won't make a mistake by choosing either of these or either of these. And like I said, by around the 1500s, your realm should look a little something like this. Let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that I should do a guide on. If you want to watch me do stuff like this live, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash redhawklive. And if you want to catch up on stuff from over there, you can subscribe to the second channel. Link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like. It really helps out a lot. And if you like the content and want to see more videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of them. And you can become a member today and join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.